What's up guys, my name is Julian, your solar expert, and today I'm gonna to be answering one of the most commonly confused topics, which is what is a kilowatt? What is a kilowatt hour? How do they relate? And can you just make this easy for me, <laughs> okay? And so that's what I'm gonna do. So commonly as a solar consultant, I hear questions all the time that are similar to like, if I use 10,000 kilowatt hours in a year, do I need a 10 kilowatt system or you know something similar to that and a lot of people are just really confused on this and i'm gonna i'm gonna clear it up so first i'm going to explain in terms of the solar what the kilowatt is and what a kilowatt hour is and then i'm going to go into the battery second so first let's talk about solar so let's just simply learn how to calculate what the system size is in terms of kilowatts okay so let's say you're talking to a solar consultant and he says you need a 10 kilowatt system and you're like great I have no idea what that means. All right, so how you calculate that is all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the watt rating of each panel. So let's say uh, each panel is 400 watts in this example. And then you're gonna just multiply 400 by the number of panels ultimately. So let's say you have 25 panels and uh, 400 times 25 is 10,000. So your system would be rated for 10,000 watts or we say 10 kilowatts. I think of a kilowatt in terms of a moment in time, because it's a power rating. And then energy is basically kilowatt hours and you add the time into the equation. And so the next question is, how many kilowatt hours is this system really going to produce? And that question is not as simple as just saying it's gonna produce 10,000 kilowatt hours a year. So what does this 10 kilowatts even really mean? So First off, this is the DC rating of the system and oftentimes your inverter, not, not actually oftentimes, always your inverter rating or the AC rating, which is after it's been inverted, is always gonna be less. And so usually a 400 watt panel, when it gets up to like its maximum production, it may be producing like 350, maybe 300. It depends on where you are. You know, the more north you are, the less you're gonna produce. Um, there's, you know, many factors, the azimuth, the direction that the panel is facing. But theoretically, let's just say that this 400 watt panel was going to produce around 300 watts in the real world. So if this panel is getting hit by the sun and it is producing 300 watts for one hour, at the end of that hour, you would have produced 300 watt hours or 0.3 kilowatt hours. And so on a daily basis, one panel usually is going to produce somewhere in the range of one and a half to two and a half kilowatt hours. And so if the panel theoretically produces 300 watts for five hours, right, that's 1500 watts or 1 1.5 kilowatt hours. So what we do in terms of uh, the calculation for the kilowatt hours is it's basically that what I just explained, but then over 365 days. And so the math is not gonna come out to be where a 10 kilowatt system magically produces 10,000 kilowatt hours. And in fact, in North America, depending upon where you are, usually the ratio of kilowatt to kilowatt hour production is somewhere like 1.4 to 1.8. A 10 kilowatt system, like in California, in Southern California, that may produce around like 16 to 18,000 kilowatt hours you know, through the 365 days. So chances are, if you're using like 10,000 kilowatt hours, you actually probably need something closer to like a six or maybe like a seven kilowatt system to actually produce your 10,000 kilowatt hours. So if you haven't already kind of thought of it, basically the kilowatt is a standard way for us to size your system and know like how much material you're gonna get. but every system is going to produce a little bit different amounts of kilowatt hours in terms of production. So a 10 kilowatt system in San Diego and a 10 kilowatt system in New York are going to produce different amounts of kilowatt hours. And also just in terms of system to system, two, home, two homes that are right next to each other but have different roof planes and so the panels are oriented in different ways, those are also going to be reasons that uh, basically change and make the kilowatt hour production different between the two systems even though they are uh, you know, both rated at 10 kilowatts. Let's say you had a 10 kilowatt system but you put the panels upside down and they were facing the ground. Well, that 10 kilowatt system is gonna pretty much produce nothing. 
All right, so let's talk about batteries. How, how do we explain the kilowatts and kilowatt hours for the batteries? So the way that I like to think about it is imagine like a, a water jug, right? That's let's say 10 gallons, right? And the gallons would be like the kilowatt hours. It would be like how much is in there? How much can it hold? You know, in this case it's gallons, but maybe a battery is rated for 10 kilowatt hours. And so it can hold basically a 10 kilowatt hour amount of energy. Now, power is kind of like if you were gonna you know, open up the nozzle to uh, fill up your cup with water, it would be like how fast can you drain the 10 kilowatt hours into the cup? So for example, if we're talking like a Tesla EV, that model Plaid, which is like the fastest EV, the power rating of that battery is very high because it needs to di discharge as much power as fast as possible to use it. So you could have theoretically, um, you know, a huge battery tank. You could have a, a 50 gallon water tank, but then you could have just a tiny little nozzle and you know, you can barely, you know, discharge that water basically into the cup or discharge the, the battery power. And so you need to have the correct capacity, of course, and the, re the correct amount of kilowatt hours, but you also need enough power to actually feed your home enough. And where this kind of comes into play more is like for air conditionings, where there's a, an LRA or a locked rotor amperage that it takes, which is basically an energy requirement just to start uh, spinning the turbine and get your AC on. And so when batteries were first kind of coming to market, you know, several years back, a lot of the batteries didn't have enough power to actually like start up an AC system or, or use a well. And there were a lot of people that purchased these batteries thinking they're gonna have full home backup. And you know, they came to find later that the, the battery power isn't sufficient in order to actually feed everything all at once. And so what you need is, like I said, enough capacity to get you through the night. You know, you need a certain amount of water, right? And then you need to be able to get it at a certain speed. All right, so I'm gonna give you kind of a little bit of example so we can think about these kilowatt hours a little bit easier. So let's say you are going to consume 12,000 kilowatt hours on a yearly basis, which I would say is, you know, pretty, pretty average. And if you divide that by 365 days, that's gonna come out to be 32.8 kilowatt hours a day on average that your home consumes. So let's say, um, you know, cause every, every household is different and everyone uses power differently, but let's say that you use approximately half of your power during the sun, you know, sun hours and half of your power during the evening or at nighttime. So, you know, that, that basically leaves us with like about 16 to 17 kilowatt hours um, split, right? Uh, that you'll be using in the day and at night. So if you were in a place where there was bad net metering and you weren't getting good credits from the utility, um, which there are tons of places still in the country and you don't need batteries at all. But if you're in a place like Southern California where you know, you, you're not getting any credit that's really valuable back, you're going to want to store your power so you can then use it later once the sun goes down. And so, so like I said, if you use about 16 to 17 kilowatt hours in the daytime and then another 16 to 17 kilowatt hours in the evening, you're gonna want a system that produces at the very least 32 or 33 kilowatt hours total on average, but then you're also gonna need a battery that has the capacity for, like I said, around 16 to 17 kilowatt hours. And you may even wanna go a little bit above that because of over time there's a degradation uh, in the capacity. And so if you are, for example, looking at quotes and let's say you are actually using about 12,000 kilowatt hours, but on the proposal, your consultant's saying, no, you just need like one Tesla Powerwall which by the way is 13.5 kilowatt hours of capacity. You will be a little bit short um, and have that deficit of three to four kilowatt hours that every day, basically, or I should say every evening, once your battery essentially runs out of juice in the middle of the night, you're then back on grid power, um, basically up until your solar is back on and recharging the battery and powering your home. And so what you don't wanna do is undersize your battery if you can help it, because it's gonna make you a lot more reliant on the grid than you're hoping to be. You know, going solar with a battery, you're hoping to be as independent as possible and save as much money as possible at the same time. And if you're setting yourself up to still have to pay, um, you know, for four kilowatt hours a day, um, it would have been better ultimately to just get four kilowatt hours more of battery um, and then just store it yourself. So you wanna make sure that you're getting it sized correctly. 
Also, in terms of power, in order to have full home backup, you're most likely going to need at least 20 kilowatt hours. And the reason why that is, is because you're gonna need enough power to go along with the capacity. And most batteries, which I'm gonna be making a full, ba a full battery comparison video soon with like the 10 top batteries, but a lot of the batteries have built-in inverters and they're more like full energy systems, not just a battery. It's, a, it's an inverter and a battery combination. And so usually you, you kind of buy them together. And so if you, you know, are gonna have a, a 10 kilowatt hour battery, you're gonna have a certain amount of power, but then you know, the only way to get more power is to have another battery to put them in parallel. And this isn't always the case, but this is most of the time how it's gonna work. So you're normally gonna need at least two batteries if you're gonna start talking about full home backup. If you would like a quote, or if you would like a proposal or consultation, I actually work in 30 states, so please reach out 760-473-5878. I have a whole team of local consultants around the country, and I'd really love to help you out if you would like me to help you with your solar project. Thanks so much.